continue with user IDs and cookies. There is a counter that collects data about visitor behavior on web pages and it sends it to a web analytics team. Let's see if I can uh, expand this a little bit. This counter is encased in several lines of the website's code. But a good example of a web analytics system is Google Analytics. Every visitor action is monitored. The counter can track views of specific pages as well as purchases. It also gathers ge uh, general information about visitors, including the traffic source that sent them to the site. So, like this is something you would see in the Google Linux Analytics dashboard. Uh, you can see, you know. When people come in on their mobile phone, sometimes it'll have their age, sometimes it'll have what device they're on, whether it's an iPhone or an Android or um, a PC. And then also the traffic source, like it could be a social media page or it could be um, from Google search, for instance. So data from these counters is referred to as raw. It can be useful, but not for immediate analysis. Web analytics systems convert raw data into reports on audience, traffic, and sources. Reports are easy to work with. They allow you to combine different metrics and illustrate the results. What can you get out of a Google Analytics report? Your metric is the return purchase rate and can be calculated with a user ID. This is a unique number assigned to a visitor to set them apart from others. Cookies. When you return to a website you've already been to, the web analytics system will assign you the same user ID. This happens due to cookies, which are text files left in your device's memory after your very first visit to a website and are sent to a server when you visit the site again. You've encountered cookies many times on social media. Websites remember you so that you don't have to enter your username and password every time you visit. This is, for instance, why you might go to a website and then go to a different website and you see ads for the previous website you were at because you still have a cookie stored for that website. Websites have recently started alerting visitors about their use of cookies in Europe. This began as a result of the General Data Protection Regulation, a regulation that EU law aimed at increasing the protection of personal information. Companies that do not comply with this regulation can face a fine of up to 20 million euros. Cookies help determine the user ID of a returning user, but a visitor goes to a website for multiple web browsers, they'll be assigned multiple user IDs. This happens because each web browser has its own set of cookies. To distinguish a visitor with multiple user IDs, you will need to additional information about them. I, um, an example, an email address. Let's return to the task from the previous lesson. In order to answer the initial question from the manager, which traffic source performs the best, we'll need to know the sources of traffic. For the sake of this task, their email marketing, can, uh, contextual ads, and other. Okay, so let's load in here to re-sign in real quick. Okay, so take a look at the summary table developers have sent us. It's called logs because it contains logs, which are uh, text files with data on the website visits. Read the contents of logs.csv and save it to the logs data frame. So you can do logs is equal to, um, also we didn't ever import pandas, so probably have to put that up here, import pandas as pd. Okay, and we want to pd dot logs is equal to pd dot read csv. with the file name which they have is logs.csv. Evaluate the data structure by calling the head method. One row in the table represents a single visit to the website. When new information is added to the data has already been gathered and referred to it as data enrichment. Okay, so actually they want us to use slash data sets slash logs.csv. Okay, so we hit play here. We should see the same columns they had here. I guess we can uh, print logs.head. Okay, so we see the user ID, just like I mentioned, the email address, which looks like the majority of them aren't there. The um, source and the purchase. Okay, so let's check that. Okay, so we do next. Estimate the size of the data by um, by applying the info method to the logs table. So now they want us to print logs.info. So 
So it looks like there's, what is that, 200, 200,000 entries? It's a lot. Quite a handful. We also have NANs in place with some encrypted email addresses. Python, help. So we can calculate the number of unique user IDs and unique email addresses in the table. Um, so print the results as follows. So if we do print logs dot, um, what is it, email dot unique dot count. And we're going to want to first print the title they have here, unique email addresses colon. And we have comma, which will add the space and so on. So actually I'm probably gonna copy paste this here. Okay, now we don't want the email, we want the user ID. I might have the labels here wrong, we'll see. Something went wrong. Has no attribute count. Hope this is a function here. Oh, I do have it as a function, so maybe it's not. Uh, maybe it's some we can do. Oh, we can do length of unique as well. Let's just print unique for now and see uh, what it comes out as. So we can do length. That looks about right, we'll check that. Okay, the format. Unique, e oh, I did unique email addresses twice, so it should be unique user IDs. Correct. Next. Okay, so the last task here is using the unique method to determine the unique traffic sources in the table. Print the result. So, um, let's see. What was what does this look like again? Print logs dot head. So we want source. Um, logs dot logs at source. I don't know. They probably want um, us to go in more detail than this, but I'm just going to check here. It should just be the oh, there. Um, this is just the exact same thing as we did in the last one, except we replace user ID and email with source and then dot d unique, and you can see that you get the uh, output here. And we're probably in the next part going to get rid of the undefines and the nuns because we really just want other email and contacts. So we'll hit next here. 
So you can find none inside the traffic source column as well as nan inside the encrypted email address column. Remember that these values indicate the absence of a value in a cell. Nan means a number is missing from a cell. Nan is a float data type, which means that you can perform mathematic operations on it. And none is a none object type, which means you can't perform mathematical operations on it. When you find rows with none and nan, don't give in to temptation to delete them right away. Missing values can often be restored. And one of the best ways to go about doing this is to ask the developer who supplied the data. Let your fellow coworkers know about any issues with missing values. Your drive when it comes to fixing errors will improve overall results. We call the value counts method, which returns unique values in their counts in order to determine how many rows are missing in a traffic source. Traffic sources are missing from 1,674 rows. That's less than 1% of all values in the logs data frame. Keep in mind that there are 200,000 rows. Less than 1% is pretty much a minuscule amount, and deleting these rows doesn't typically affect the results for most tasks. But what if these rows were directly related to one of the traffic sources, such as email marketing? In that case, if we delete the rows, we lose about one-seventh of our data which is 13.6%. If this were to happen, it would likely affect the email marketing metrics and therefore the overall task results. Let's take a look at the rows using the isNull method, which checks for missing values in a column. The code above resembles a filter, and such the expression logs. Uh, email is null, scans through the email addresses for missing values, and keeps only those that contain nan. The head method pr uh, prints the first five columns in order to calculate the number of rows without email addresses, and we'll have to call the count method. Okay, so the email address is missing in 186,000 out of 200,000 rows. This number makes sense since users seldom sign up for something on a website if they don't absolutely have to. NAND values can lead to incorrect results when grouping data. Let's look at an example of that in the sample problem where we determine the winner of the Hogwarts House Cup. Throughout the course of a year, Hogwarts students earn points for their houses. The Hogwarts Cup is awarded the house that earns the most points, so there's no room for error in analyzing your data. Let's study the table with the points students earned according to their house. With the sum method, we can calculate how many points all the students earn combined. Let's figure out how many points each young wizards earn by using the group by method. So they're just doing a whole bunch of review of, of things we've done in Pandas already. Okay, so restore justice by giving Ron his house back and replace Nan with Gryffindor, saving the results as Hogwarts points, print out Hogwarts points table. Okay, so we want to um, do Hogwarts points dot fill in a right, I guess it's a NAN with uh, Gryffindor and they want us to save it as Hogwarts points Hogwarts posts should be points. So fill nan is not a thing, so we'll just do fill in a and see if that works. We could also do probably fill null. Okay, let's check that. Great, so we'll go next. Modify the source code so the results look as follows. So we have total points for Hogwarts is, um, we're gonna sum the points column, right? So uh, we'll do Hogwarts points points dot sum okay and then total points by house is um, Hogwarts points dot group by house
Then apply the sum method to add the points which are values in the points column. Dot sum let's see what that gives us Total points by house. So they also call dot sum again, potentially. Um, it's interesting that it has the D type thing after the end of it, it probably doesn't like that. Do uh, make it a string. It's interesting. Why is it printing the D type down there? We can do here. We can do. Um, Zero dot zero F, right? And then uh, then that. Oh, dot format with it in the and supported format string pass to format Total points for a house. I I think let's see. Just applying what they have over here this exact same print statement Hogwarts points dot group by house we want the column points to be summed and then we take the sum again uh, and that gives us the total here um, wondering if they're going to complain because uh, the 87 on the next line probably nope now it's on the same line okay and then to get this last line here that cup goes to number house name uh, we scroll down just a little bit more and they have it here, which we didn't talk about, is this IDX met, uh, max method. Um, so we do print the cup goes to and then uh, yeah, let's have no space here and then do Hogwarts points dot group by house and then we want the points dot sum dot idx max okay so if we hit play we should get pretty much the same description they have down here okay so let's check that Correct, next. 
So three is let's go back to the task about traffic sources and calculate a conversions, find the total number of visits from each traffic source, then save the results to the visits variable and print it. So if we do value counts, um, and we want the sources, right? Log source dot value counts. I think it's a function. Um, and then we want to print the number of visits. Let's see. Yep, I think it's about right, so we'll check that. Groups visits by source and store the number in the visits variable. So maybe they want us to use the sum kind of thing, so we can do logs.group by um, source and then take the sum. And then print visits. Then we just want the source column, right? There, basically, um, this is an equivalent expression to the first thing I wrote, which is just dot value counts. And uh, the, in the literally ex the example, they did exactly what I did, and so that's why I was like having trouble. I was like, why? Why does the example match mine, but it's wrong? But you can see it's the, it's literally the equivalent thing. You see, other is here because it's not sorted, but here it is sorted. But they are all the same values. So um, the only other difference is that you have source here instead of, and here you have user ID. But uh, either way, I, I think their their system's broken there. But uh, it's okay. We'll we'll go to the next one and see. So calculate the total number of completed purchase for each traffic source and save the results to the purchase. Okay, so this is going to be the same expression as we had last time, but we're going to sort at the purchase um, things. So we do logs.group by source. And then we want the purchase um, column and we want to sum them. Potentially we have we should have two sums there, but we'll see print purchase. Let's see if that's what they want. Yep, that's correct. Next. Calculate the conversion rate for each traffic source and save the results to the conversion and print it so we want to divide the um, the total number of or the purchases divided by the um, number of visits so let's see if we can do that purchases divided by visits and then they want us to print the conversion let's see if it'll let us do that yep that looks right check that Correct. I feel like email is the best one for them. Next. Okay, so this video is getting kind of long, so I'll stop it here and we'll do the next next time.